Have you noticed that I like trains? It's kind of obvious, isn't it? <laughs> and what about toy trains? They're so much fun. But why do I like those cute model trains? Hmm. My name is Ian Curry and this is Thinking Out Loud. Come on, let me tell you what I think. Some of you noticed that this was the 100th video. That's a lot of videos. I must say that when I started making this series, I really didn't expect to make quite so many videos or to have been sitting in my thinking chair quite so often. I'm very grateful to all of you for taking the time to watch each week. And thank you too for passing the videos on to your friends so that more people can enjoy them. Thank you. So since this is the 100th video, I wondered about doing something amazing and changing everything for you. <laughs> then I thought about needing to get some sleep. My work schedule is particularly heavy right now. And I decided to have another sit in my thinking chair lean back and have a probably long nap instead. <laughs> do you ever have a lot on your mind? I do. Sometimes I just need to sort those thoughts out and make them make some sort of sense. I suppose these videos being called Thinking Out Loud might be a clue to that. But how do you process thoughts? How do you come to terms with things going on in your life. One of the things I like to do is get away from the particular situation that is making me do all that thinking and concentrate on something else. You've probably noticed by now that I like to do that in the train room. I can go there and play with the trains and work out how to make things work or, or whatever. I give my brain time to sort out the mess and muddle going on in other more important areas of my life. Have you ever wondered what it is about toy trains that is so very interesting to me? <laughs> you see, I like riding trains. I like watching them go by. And for whatever reason, I think they're often a much nicer way of traveling than driving. There are some trains I like more than others, but generally, I just like trains. <laughs> My personal favorites are some of the older English trains I grew up watching or riding every day on the way to school. Since I grew up in the southeast of England, around London, and my dad worked on the underground, those trains are particularly interesting to me. Model trains help me a lot. I can run those while remembering the real things from long ago. I must say the models these days leave very little to the imagination. The realism model is remarkable. I used to be impressed when I could figure out how to make the tiny lights work, but now some of them even make sounds that mimic the real thing. Impressive, right? But can a toy with a tiny sugar cube speaker inside really compare to the huge, massively powerful real thing? One of the thoughts that crossed my mind recently was that comparisons between model trains and the real thing is quite silly <laughs> in one sense. But at the same time, the models really are made in the likeness of the real thing and certainly let you know at least something about the original. For me though, the models don't really need to be super fine detail and accurate to be enjoyed. Yes, I do notice and appreciate an accurate model, but in some ways I'm just as happy with a very basic model that has obviously shortcomings. 
I have a good number of trains and somehow they all have value to me. There's some lovely simple wooden ones like these that you may have noticed a few times. Lovely. And then there's the really big one on the shelf there behind me as well as the ones that get run more regularly. Some are in boxes, others carefully stored in drawers, but all represent something or other that I enjoy. Perhaps you can see where I'm going with this. The trains are one thing, but what about people? You've probably heard me use the expression, made in God's image. That is a running theme throughout the Bible that has become very important to me. But what does it mean in practice? Perhaps put another way, what should that mean to all of us? When I look at Sherlock Holmes, this lovely locomotive, I'm of course reminded of the Class 20 locomotive that has so often been used to work on and around the London Underground system. It is indeed an outstanding model and certainly one of my favourites. Is it perfect? <laughs> no, of course not. For a start, the wheels are too close together for the scale. The real thing has a driver in the cab and usually these locomotives work in pairs, rarely alone. However, imperfect as they may be, as simple and unreliable, they are precious to me. Just like all of us, we are made in God's image and precious to Him. Now, obviously, my trains can't think for themselves and do things on their own, but we can, can't we? Now, being made in God's image has consequences. Not only do we somehow bear resemblance in a funny sort of way to God, the real thing, but we also represent Him. But there's a problem with that. It's not just me that's made in God's image. So is everyone else. Every person we dislike, every person who isn't like us, who does things that are outside our comfort zone, dresses in weird clothes, believes strange things, and says things that are just plain daft, all of them the good, the bad, and the really strange. Yep, all made in God's image, and in some way represent God. Ooh, that's hard, isn't it? That means we need to be careful the way we treat that representation of God. We need to treat that the right way. We might re be rejecting a, a, an important facet of God we'd never considered before. Now, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? There are all sorts of responsibilities that come with representing someone too, and especially if that someone is God himself. The things we do to ourselves. Hmm. Let's explore that thought for a minute. It's not a new idea. Paul wrote about it long ago. We are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Well, I suppose that's a start. That's hinting at the concept at least. I love that we are God's masterpiece part. That makes me feel special already. Paul goes on elsewhere to say that since we're made in God's image, and can think and act on our own, we should put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. Ooh, there's a thought. Become like Him. That's absolutely a huge challenge, isn't it? Become like Him. I mean, that has me questioning everything. Would this or that action represent God? What about this way of thinking, or that way of speaking. What about how I treat people? I mean, all those people that are just weird and don't fit into the way I want to live. What about 
them. Hmm. It is indeed something I think about a very great deal. Some of the people I know wouldn't want to hang out with some of my best friends. That's sort of all right because we're too busy having a lovely time enjoying each other's differences to notice. Sometimes, but, well, it sort of does matter. Jesus seems to have intentionally gone and found the strangest and most diverse people he could possibly find and hung out with them. Can you imagine God wanting to be with weird people? Hmm. You see, James, the brother of Jesus, seems to have got it and had something to say about this, and he sounded like he was getting a bit cross. Let me show you. James is always clever in the way he starts off talking to people, and then, once they're settling down, listening, makes his point. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and fish. And I'm sure some of the people James was talking to had pets that could do tricks, just like Sparky can. They must have been smiling to themselves, thinking, yep, that's me. James goes on, though, but no one can tame the tongue. It's restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Well, that was rude, wasn't it? But I'll bet it got their attention. Sometimes our tongue praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth. Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. James is talking to the very people who should know better too, isn't he? I mean, people who claimed to be followers of Jesus. One minute, they're singing God's praises, and the next cursing people they don't like, who we've already been reminded are made in God's image. Some of the trains I have are very old or have been badly treated and are broken. Some are just plain ugly, but somehow I find a place for them all. I go to the trouble of fixing them up and making them like new instead of throwing out the ones that don't work the way I want them to. I spend time with them and enjoy giving them a new lease of life. Fun. As I gather my thoughts and think of all the diverse friends I have and love dearly, I can't help thinking about what David, the shepherd king, once said as he talked to God. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvellous. How well I know it. Next time you run into someone you really don't appreciate and would prefer they were different, remember that they too were not only made in God's image, but as a result, they also represent God's wonder in some way or other. As we try to live in a way that truly represents our Creator, let's remember that the same Creator made some jolly strange people. I'm rather glad He did, because some of those people are my friends. Until next time, goodbye.